Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, we do greet you all. Shabbat Shalom. Ko Yisraya. They're listening to us today, wherever you are. By whatever means, we say Shabbat Shalom unto you on this beautiful day. This yom that Yahweh has given us, that we're able to gather together in his name. All having one mind, we all have one desire, and that is to walk according to his mitzvah and according to his Torah, Yisrael. What I want to do today is somewhat um, continue on the message of the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. And then maybe later on, if uh, so be it, I may start on something that has to do with the vision, Yisrael. For without a vision, as a people, we perish. And having a vision is more than one just trying to predict or seeing something in his mind or his imagination concerning what we believe is the future. And it's one having a determination, standing on the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh, even as we, Zakar, remember of his abundance, what he has done through Torah, how he has delivered Yisrael time and time again. And that, that same power, the same promises, that those same things he has done in Torah, Yisrael, he does for us today. He done them yesterday. And he shall continue to do those things, Yisrael. But we must continue to stand. We must continue to zakah, remember what he has done for us. And also we must have a vision. Hallelujah. So let me begin here. Concerning remembrance or remember. And wisdom. I'm going to read Wisdom 12, chapter 12, verse 2. And then I want to move somewhat to Kepha, 2 Kepha chapter 1, as I begin this today, Israel. We must remember, or we must be reminded, Israel, all the time, in every way, by every fashion. Even as one calls your name, there is a zakat, there's a remembrance. There is an association that you know that that name, that sound, it belongs to you. So in a flash, it causes a memorial that I am the one that is being called. So it always implies, or it causes us to recollect, to remember, or to zakar. It is a reminder it's for us to recall and also to call things to mind. Situations, circumstances, we find ourselves somewhat repeating the same things over and over again. Yeah, and many times we don't respond well or respond right. Yeah, the Torah talks about even the iniquity of one, one's sin, transgression of the Torah, the Mitzvah. It is a stumbling block to one. Sure and even as it being a stumbling block, you've tripped before. You have stumbled over obstacles and things yeah. when you're going down a pathway. Yeah. And if you're going down that same path, that incident caused you to zakah, remember that object or that thing, that place, that you will respond differently, yeah. that you not make the same mistake. That's why Yahweh gives us his mitzvah, his Torah. That's why he gives us example throughout the Torah, the mitzvah, the sefer, that we will zakah, remember those things, that we not stumble and fall continually, Israel, and that we may move on. With a faster pace, with more understanding, with knowledge, Yisrael, that we not succumb or fall to those same things over and over. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be in the house of Yisrael. So we must zakar, we must remember. Let's see what Kepha in 2 Peter chapter 1 has to say concerning this. Even in death, Yisrael, we must continually remind ourselves. Even in death. It says here, wherefore... I will not be neglectful, but put always in remembrance of these things. What things? Are there certain things we must, Zakar, we must remember? It must continually be in our thought process, our mind, what we do, where we go, and what we say, Israel. Certainly there are. It says, though you know them, and they be established in the present truth. He says in verse, thing, verse 13, yes, I think it is sadiq or right as long as I am 
this earthly tent or this earthly tabernacle, as long as we are in this physical form, this body is right here. He said, well, I am here to start up by putting you now in remembrance. Yahweh puts us in certain, certain situations in life for us to zakar, to put us in remembrance. To put us in remembrance of the, the weakness of this physical flesh. The shortness of life as it is expressed as a vapor of smoke. The things that we should remember, Yisrael, and the things that we are prompted to remember daily and every day. That we zakar, that remember that his commandments, Remember his misfile. Remember our place as we heard. We remember of the abundance of the blessings of Almighty Yahweh as he showers them down, Yisrael. We must, Zakar, we must remember. Yes. He goes on in verse 14 and says, Knowing Ayada, understanding that shortly I must put off, we must put off this earthly tabernacle, this earthly tent. There's not a day that goes forth that by some way or some means that is brought to my remembrance, that we must lay this stuff down. We must do it, Yisraeli. It is a daily process. That we lay down our will. That we lay down our lust, our desire. Not just waiting for that appointed time where we pass or we die or we sleep, but that we put this flesh in subjection daily, Yisraeli, to the mitzvah, to the Torah, to the path, of Almighty Yahweh. He said, we must put off this earthly tent. Even as Yahshua HaMashiach, he said, he has shown me. He has revealed it unto me. He has shown us the path. He has shown us how to do it. Verse 15. He says, even so moreover, he said, I will endeavor. We must endeavor, Yisrael. We must make it our point. Our 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 way, our passion, our in life, endeavor. He said, I endeavor that you may be able, even after my death, to have these things. These things that Yahshua HaMashiach has left to us. Yes. These things that Torah has taught and continued to teach us, Yisraeli. Do we have these things always in remembrance, in our thought process, always in our mind? As I would hear some people say in the back of our heads, it's never forgotten, it is always there, Yisrael. Yeah. His Mishra, his Torah should be at the forefront. As we hear the old condition, even say Yahshua is at the center. He's, he's all, Yisrael. Yeah. He is all. Right. How do we forget? And I would get even to that a few scriptures before I get into the, 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 the teaching, or if you may, the second part of the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. How can we forget what he has done for us. How do we set aside those things he has revealed so clearly that we walk in the path of sin, transgression the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh? Why do we do that? Why do we find an avenue to bring reproach unto the mitzvah of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? It says here in Deuteronomy, Debrim, chapter 9, I'm going to read verse 7 through verse 12. We must not forget the midst of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, the words he has spoken to us and by Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes, sir. Why should we be reminded? Because the Torah says we are a rebellious house. We are a rebellious people. We are a rebellious nation. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 7. He says, Zakar, remember... And forget not how you provoke Yahweh, your Abba, to wrath in the wilderness. Do we call those accounts in Torah? The, the making of the golden calf? Those things that cause the af, the ego of Almighty Yahweh to be poured out among, upon Yisrael? Yah? Because there were those that transgressed the Torah, that blasphemed the Hakodesh Ru, uh, the leading, the guiding of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Did not he destroy many thousands in the wilderness? Yes, he did. He says, do not forget. He said, I want you to Zakar to remember the wrath of Almighty Yahweh even in the wilderness. From the day 
that you did depart out of the land of Mizraim, even, on you, even until you have come to this place, this place, right here where we are now. Yahweh has brought us out of Mizraim. He has sent his messenger, his Muslach, to lead us. He has sent Yahshua HaMashiach to guide us in this way, Israel. We have no need to be lost in this time because he has sent forth his messenger in Yahshua HaMashiach. He says, from the time you departed out of Mizraim, even unto this time, he said, you have been rebellious against Almighty Yahweh. We have been rebellious, Israel. Let us just be forthright and honest with ourselves. We have rebelled against Almighty Yahweh. He has led us. He has guided us in this path, in this way. And yet, if we will look back and be honest with ourselves, we find ourselves, man, why did I fight against that? It was just the truth. Why did I go that way? I knew that path was not the right path, and I went that way. It's for us to zakat to remember the path of righteousness, Israel. It's time for us to stop trying to take the shortcuts out of Torah because there is no shortcut. There's only one way, and that way is through Yahshua HaMashiach. And if we try to come unto him any other way, Israel, we're as a thief and a robber before Almighty Yahweh. He said, you have rebelled and been rebellious against Almighty Yahweh. Verse 8. He said, also in Horeb, you provoke Yahweh unto anger. We provoke him unto wrath, even in the high place of Almighty Yahweh. So that Yahweh, he was angry with you to have destroyed you. Moving on to verse 10. I want to skip verse 9, verse 10. And Yahweh, he delivered to me the two tables of stone. Has it not delivered to us the two tables of stone? His hafit, his desire, his way, his path. Written with his finger, with the finger of Almighty Yahweh. So this being written even with his finger, with his words which he has spoken Israel. Do you not think that those very same words that he had written with his hands are important unto him? Yes. That those words create life. Those words create a discipline. A way that we must live, Yisrael. Yes. Sure. He did not put those words on those tables or those tablets of stone just for folly. But that we may zakah, we must observe and remember those words, those sayings, which he has spoken unto us, Israel, because he has written those things. And he said, all those tables, on them was written according to all the words, the Torah, the Mishra, Almighty Yahweh, which he spoke with you in the mount out of the midst of fire in the day of the great assembly or congregation together. Are we not congregated together? Yes. This is a great day, Israel. This is a great time. You are with us visually, also vocally. There are those that hear, that are listening, are watching us right here today, Israel. So we are all gathered together to hear the wonderful works of Almighty Yahweh. So we are assembled. Verse 11. And it says that it came to pass at the end of 40 days and 40 nights that Yahweh, he gave unto me the two tablets of stone even the tables of the covenant. And Yahweh said unto me, Arise, get you down quickly from hence. He says, For your people which you have brought forth out of the land of Mizraim, they have corrupted themselves. It's not no one else that corrupts us or you or me. It is ourselves. You can't blame it on anyone else. The corruption comes when we forget the mitzvah and the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Was not Torah spoken unto Yisra'ya and Mizraim, the desire, the hafit of Almighty Yahweh? But yet, even through all the mighty workings of Almighty Yahweh, bringing them out, they saw his hand in a, in a magnificent way. That they knew it was only the hand of Almighty Yahweh. And yet he brought them to this place. And the messenger was removed just for a short time. And in that span, we forgot or they forgot. 
the Mishra, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh that quickly. And Yahweh knew that those tables or those words of Mishra had to be engraved in those stones and those tablets. What are written in our love, Israel? Do we carry this heart of stone? That we transgress the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh? Yet he has written his Mishra, his Torah, in the love of man, of Adam. Yet we find ourselves transgressing his Mishra, his Torah, because we do not allow by the Ruach HaKodesh the remembrance of what he has done for us. Remembering his Mishra, his Torah. Remembering his commandments. Remembering the great and mighty works he has done for us, Yisrael. That we are sitting here and you are listening today. It's all been by the mighty hand of Almighty Yahweh. Should we continually forget what he has done? He said that the people you have brought out of Israel, out of Egypt, that have corrupted themselves. And they are quickly now, quickly turned aside out of the way. Do we see what happens when we forget the Mishnah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? It says quickly. It's not even a space of time, but as soon as you forget, quickly. Yes, right, Yah. It said, quickly they turn aside out of the way, which Yahweh, he said, I have commanded them, and that made unto themselves a molten image. Because we forget. Even of the mighty abundance that Yahweh has provided unto us without any kind of end, his ahava, as we have heard, his his suffering, long suffering with us, Israel. Still, we find ourselves forgetting and walking contrary to the Torah, the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. We must remember Israel. Remember everything. Remember what we want to eat. Remember what we want to desire. It could be months ago, and you're still making plans that one day I'm going to have this and I'm going to do that. But yet, the Torah, the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh, it eludes us daily because we're not. Remember, we don't cause one another by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh through Yahshua to Zakah, to remember. I want to read this in Shaftim, Judges, chapter 8, verse 32 through 34. To remind us, Israel. Many times... Because of our forgetfulness, we must be reminded, whether it's by Ak or Anaholt. But even in this situation, even after Gideon, his death, I want you to understand what had happened here. So let's begin reading here in, in Shaftim, chapter 8, verse 32. And Gideon, the son of Yosh, he died a tough old age, an age of fullness. And he was buried in the sepulcher of Yosh, his father. It says, an Ophrah of the Eberites, verse 33. And it came to pass, as soon as Gideon had passed, he died, that the children of Yisrael, they what? They turned. Not just turn one time, but it said they turn again. So this is showing us this has been a repeated process. This is something that Israel, we must break this circle. But the only way it's going to be broken is by remembering, by zakah, by reminding one another. By when the messenger comes before us, it's a continual reminder, Yisrael, of the way we must walk in the past we must take and what we must do that we may be pleasing before Almighty Yahweh. We must continually be reminded. And sometimes we find ourselves becoming aggravated. You keep telling me that. You keep saying that. I know. Well, honestly, we do forget. And we have forgotten. And it came to pass as soon as Gideon was, had died, he had passed, that the children of Israel, they turned again. And listen, they went whoring, giving themselves, opening themselves up, the Torah says, after Balaam. 
after everything. There, there was no end to the desire and the want that had to be, before, be fulfilled in the mind and the lust and in the heart of Israel. Yes. So they were a horn after Balaam, showing themselves, opening themselves up, and made Bereth their God. Made them, made Bereth their mighty one. Had put them before Almighty Yahweh, forgetting the statutes of Almighty Yahweh. Even all that Yahweh has done, nothing Balaam has done. Yeah. Or Belial. Yeah. There's nothing that the world has done for us, Israel. But it's only been through Almighty Yahweh. But yet we find ourselves because we forget. And we set those things that Yahweh has spoken and written unto us aside. We find ourselves wanting and waxing wanting and going back to the world in the wicked beggarly elements of this life, Yisraeli. So we must be reminded by Torah. We must be reminded one of another, Yisraeli. It's our responsibility as being Yisraeli. Verse 34. Verse 34. And the children of Yisraeli, the Torah says, remember not Yahweh, there are by the sovereign ruler, who did deliver them out of the hands of all of their enemies. It is Yahweh that deliver us, Yisrael, out of the hand of all of our enemies, out of all of our trials, our struggles. Even those light afflictions, those small things, they all are just small things, Yisrael. But yeah, it is Yahweh that has delivered us out of every situation, out of everything. But here it says, Yisrael, they remember not that Yahweh, the Almighty, the one that had delivered them out of the hands of all of their enemies on every side. No matter how they came from behind, we have enemies that come from behind us, but yet it is Yahweh that protects us. They try to hit us in our blind spot. Sometimes our vision is not just right for that blow. But yet it is Yahweh that protects us, Israel. How can we, Zakar, remember what he has done for us? How he protects us? How he is with us, Israel? We must be reminded. We must remember. We must, Zakar. We must allow the Mishra of the Torah to continually be in our minds and in our lives, Israel. Just as Dawi, he said it to Helium. That his Mishvah, his Torah was ever before me. Whether in the nighttime, his Mishvah was before him. In the daytime hour, his Mishvah, his Torah was ever in his mind. And even as he laid upon his bed and sleep, Yisrael, yet the Torah was there. Hallelujah. Yahshua, he is with us, Yisrael. Let us not forget him. Let us, Zakar, let us remember all that he has done for us, Yisrael. Moving, moving on as we're talking concerning remembrance to remember to Zakar. Turn with me to 2 Melekin, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. Hallelujah. The old condition they would say that Yah, Yahweh, he answers prayer. Do we believe that, Yisrael? Yeah? That he answers prayer? We cry unto him. He hears us. And there's an answer already prepared. The answer's already prepared in Yahshua. All things. But I want to read this account concerning Hezekiah. He was sick in his body. But yet Yahweh, he recovered him. It says in 2 Malachi, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. That in those days was Hezekiah, Hezekiah, sick unto death. So it wasn't just a common cold or a flu. It said that his sickness was one unto death. That's what it said. And it says that Yeshua, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith Almighty Yahweh, you must set your bed, your tent, your house. You must set it in order. We must set our house in order, Yisrael. The house is in disarray. Our minds, we find, they're scattered as a nation. 
Even our resources, they're scattered as a nation. Everyone is going for their own, their own way. A work like this, or the works of Yah, they don't want to, to lend a hand, even financially, to support. Not only that, but even the bowing of the knee to pray for Ko Yisraya, there's no support. We must get the house in order, Yisraya. He said, to get your house, your bed, in order. He said, set your house in order, verse 1, 2 Mother Kings, chapter 20. For you shall die and not live. Don't you know that we all should die, Yisrael? Even as Yahweh, he adds days unto this physical man. Yes, there will still yet there will be a day where we will pass from this physical body, from this body of flesh. He said, you shall die and you shall not live. Then he turned Hezekiah, his face towards the wall. And he prayed, he prayed unto Almighty Yahweh, saying, when the last time we turned our faces to the wall, knowing there's no other place to go, no other avenues, but that we turn unto Almighty Yahweh for all things. And he said this in verse 3. He said, I beseech you, Almighty Yahweh. He seek Almighty Yahweh to what? To Zakar, to remember. He said, I want you to remember now how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect love. He said that with the utmost truth, knowing that he, before the presence of Almighty Yahweh, that no lie would escape or escape Almighty Yah. He said, I have stood before you with a perfect love. I have walked according to your Mishra and your, ta- and your Torah. I have zakah, I have remembered your Torah, Almighty Yahweh. And he said, and I have done that which is tough in your sight. He said, I have done those tough things you have commanded. Those things you have ordered. Those tasks you have placed before me. I have done those things, Almighty Yahweh. And Hezekiah, he wept sore. He wept greatly, Yisrael. Verse 4. And it came to pass before Yahshua was gone out into the middle court that the word of Almighty Yahweh came unto him saying, turn again. He said, I want you to go back from where you came. And I want you to go back to Hezekiah, the captain of my people. Thus saith Almighty Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of Dawi and your avat, your fathers. He said, I have heard your prayer. How many of us can stand with that kind of authority, Israel, and ask that Yahweh will zakar our works that we have done before him in Sadiq and righteousness? That I have walked according to your Mishra and your Torah. I have not forgot your commandments, Almighty Yahweh, and I have walked in them. He said, to tell her I have heard your prayer, and I have seen your tears. Have you always seen our tears? Yes. That those of us that sit in here, we have not shed one tear before the presence of Yah. That those of you listening, you have not shed a tear. Your sin, your transgressions. There's no shamefulness. There's no earnest uh, plot of prayer. That Yahweh could look down and said, I have seen your tears. Where the tears just right, Yah? Hallelujah. Where's the brokenness upon a nation that have transgressed continually before Almighty Yahweh? Yet, he has not let us go. He has not destroyed us utterly, Yisrael. But he said, I want you to tell him, go back and tell him that I have seen his tears. Behold, he said, I will heal you. I will make you whole. And on the third day, you shall go up to the house of Almighty Yahweh. Did not Yahweh make him whole? Did he not obey Yahweh and go where Yahweh commanded him on that third day, Israel? Yeah. We must obey the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. We must stand upon the testimonies of Almighty Yahweh and upon the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach because that's all we have for a testimony. Hallelujah. That Yahshua HaMashiach, he stands before us. 
Again, talking about remembering and remembrance. Yes, right, y'all. Turn with me to Malachi. Chapter 4, verse 4. Malachi. We must remember. It must be brought to our remembrance. Our minds must be jarred or shaken that we not transgress the Torah of the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. And let us not grow weary reminding one another. And let us not be weary being reminded of those things that we must do, Yisrael. Because it's those things that keeps us walking straight. It keeps us on the path and heading toward the Melchut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. It says here in Melchia chapter 4, verse 4, just one verse. To remind us, Israel. He says, remember you, the Torah of Moshe, yes. my servants. Do we find ourselves remembering the Mishra of the Torah, even this Torah of Moshe? Do we remember Azakah, Yahshua HaMashiach? Those things he had laid as a foundation and a footer for us, Israel. He said, remember you the Torah of Moshe, my servant. He said, what I commanded unto him in Horeb. For all of Israel, with statues and also with judgments. Sometimes it's the judgments of Yahweh that brings us back into the path, causes us to remember. It causes us to shoo, to turn back unto him, Yisrael. It also says here, if you would turn quickly to Yonah, chapter 2, verse 7. Yeah. And then I want to move on to Hosea. Even when we are weak and there's time of fading, Israel, we cannot forget no. Almighty Yahweh, what he has done. That's right. Because it is by him and through him that we are able, and that we are more able to stand the trials. To stand the test. And when our enemies rise up against us, as I have read, Yahweh, he is there, as we have heard today, to fight for us. It is his battle. But we must, Zakar, we must remember this, Israel. Yonah, chapter 2, verse 7. It says, when my nephesh fainted within me, did not his nephesh faint within him? He was in a place where he could not escape. Could not escape the judgments of Almighty Yahweh. He could not escape what he has done by transgressing the Torah of the commandment of Almighty Yahweh. There was no way he could return or escape. So he's Zakah. He said, when I was fainted or faint-hearted, and my love within me, he said, I, Zakah, I remembered Almighty Yahweh. And he said, and my prayer, my Pilar, came unto the Kodesh throne, or his great tabernacle. We must zakah. We must remember. Even in time of weakness, in time of agony, anguish, pain, doubt, we must zakah. We must remember the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. He said, I remembered you, Yahweh. I remember how you brought me out of darkness. I remember the past of the Torah you had laid before me. And as I walked in those paths, I became stronger and stronger, Almighty Yah. He said, Zakah, we must remember Yisrael Yah. We must remember Zakah, those things. Hosea, Hosea chapter 7, verse 1, I want to read. Concerning the sins of a nation, our sins, Yisrael Yah. That we, must rem- that we must remember the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And not only that, Yahweh, he remembers when we transgress against him. He says here, chapter 7, verse 1. He said, when I would have healed Yisrael, and when the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered, and the wickedness of Samaria, for they committed falsehood, and the chief comes in. And the bear of robbers, they spoil without. Uh, yes. He said in verse 2, Then they consider not in their own love, in their own hearts, yeah. that I remember all of their wickedness. Yes, he, does. he said, I remember. He said, I have not forgotten. 
He said, I remember all of their wickedness. He said, now their own doings have beset them about. He said, by their own doings, their own transgressions, they have stumbled. They have been placed or misplaced or set about, beset. He said, they have been beset about, and they are before my face. He said, there's nothing hid before, before me. There's no way that they can hide. Verse 3. They make the king glad with their wickedness. Do we not make ourselves glad for a moment? Does not wickedness and sin feel tough for a moment? Sure it does. It has its short pleasures, but it is short-lived. And after it is brought forth, it brings forth death, Israel. He said, they make the king glad with their wickedness. And the princes with their lies. We lie to ourselves continually. The hidden man of our own love, it speaks flattery unto us, Israel. It says in verse 4, they are all adulterers. As an other heated by the baker, who ceases from raising after he has kneeled, kneaded the dough, until it be leavened. So we all seek our own way, Israel. We all have gone our own paths before Almighty Yahweh. And even as this baker, he prepares the dough to be placed in the fire that it may rise up. So we do, Israel, with the leavening and the sinful nature of our own left. We allow it to rise. We allow it to swell up, Israel, yeah, yeah. before Almighty Yahweh, because we have forgotten his statutes. We have forgotten his mitzvah. We have forgotten all the things he has spoken unto us, Israel, to remember. Yeah. To, that we may continue walking in the paths of Siddiq, of righteousness. Quickly, Timothy, 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 6. And then I will move on to Romans. Romeo. Even as Sao, he even exhorts Timothy, that he will be strengthened even by the gifts of the Ruach, of the HaKodesh Ruach, Israel. Yeah. So should we be reminded? He reminds him right here in verse 1, chapter 1, verse 6 of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy. He said, for this reason, I remind you. He said, I bring this to your, re to your remembrance. That you were Zakah. He said that I remind you. Why? He said to stir up. Right. To stir up. We need to be stirred up, Israel. Yeah. We need someone that is faithful that should remind us. Yeah. And repeat to us the mission of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh that we Zakah to remember. He said, I remind you to stir up what? The gift of Almighty Yahweh. Don't we have gifts, Israel? Yes. We all have gifts. Life is a gift. Walking in the Mishra has been given to us yes. as a gift. His commandments are a gift, Israel. Should we not be stirred up in those things? Yes. Because it all comes from Almighty Yahweh, does it not? So every tub and perfect gift, it comes from Almighty Yahweh. Judgment, it comes from Almighty Yahweh. We must be stirred up in his judgment. He's talking about a certain gift here. He said, to stir up the gift of Almighty Yahweh, which is in you. Those things must be stirred up within us, Israel. What gift was in Timothea? He says here, the gift that is in you, by the laying on of my hands, or Sahu hands. He said, I have given you something, and I want you to be reminded of that, of this gift that has been given unto you, Yisrael. We must be reminded of Yahshua and the precious dom that was shed. Why? Because through that dom, through his offering, Yisrael, has been given us a door away into the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Because without that dom, there is no remission for sin. There is no cleansing. Is that not a great gift unto us? Yeah. So we must be stirred up, Yisrael. 
and the gifts of Almighty Yahweh. He says here in verse 7, For Yahweh, he has not given us the Ruach of fear. We fear so many things. We fear death. We fear our lights being turned off, not making the bill on time. We fear the officer on the highway, the trooper. We fear so many things, spiders, all sorts of things. But Yahweh, he has not given us the ruach of fear, but one of power, of ahava, of love, and that of a sound mind. So we must allow the gifts of Yahweh to be stirred up within us. His Torah should be stirred up in us by way of remembrance, Israel, yeah. that we will be strong as a nation, as a people, and that we stand on his promises, that we remember what Yahshua HaMashiach has done as he has dedicated himself, first of all, unto Yah, but unto Kol Yisrael. Yeah. So let us allow the Mishvah to be stirred up, his Torah to be stirred up, his Ahava to be stirred up, Yisrael, amongst us, that we may continue in the ways and in the mishpahs of Almighty Yahweh. And we must be of, as it continue on, he has given us this mind of power, of Ahava, and being sure-minded, or being sound-minded, yeah. that we are not shaken. That we're not taken by every wind, by every wave, by every doctrine, but that we are given unto the Mishra, the Torah, the commandments of Almighty Yahweh and his instructions. Moving on to Romeo, chapter 15, verse 14. Romeo, chapter 15, verse 14. I want to begin reading. For we as a people... There are things that we as a people, we are the elect of Almighty Yahweh, are we not? Yeah. Then there's things that we must do, there's things that we have to be reminded of as a people and as a nation. It says in Romeo, Romans chapter 15, verse 14, And I myself also, he said, I am persuaded of you, because I am convinced. That's what he said. My Israelite brothers, that you also are full of tough, much tough, filled with all knowledge. That's what he, said. he believed that. He's persuaded. Hallelujah. And filled with much knowledge, able also to admonish, and that is to warn, to exhort one another. We must do that, Israel. We must remind one another. We must exhort one another what to be sober, to stand firm, to not transgress or turn our backs on Almighty Yahweh. We need those of that one to remind us. Yes. And we should give Yahweh Toda, Yisrael. He said, because of the free unmerited Ahava and favor that is given to me of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 16. That I should be a minister, or that I should be one that brings forth the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, the Messiah of the Malach, or Yahshua HaMashiach, to the nation. Preaching the message of Almighty Yahweh, that the offering up of the nations may be acceptable. We want to be acceptable before Almighty Yahweh. Also being set apart by the Ruach. HaKodesh. Yes, beautiful. Are we not convinced of this, Israel? Mm -hmm. That by the Mishvah, the Torah, the reminding of those that stand, yeah. that do not waver, Israel, of this free unmerited favor that Yahweh has given to, to us through Yahshua HaMashiach, we should be reminded of that daily. We should remind one another of that, Israel. Why? Because we are his elect. And that we should remain in his instruction, Yisrael, and not try to take any other path or any other way. 
I want to read out of wisdom concerning this remembrance, this reminder. That's all I'm doing, Israel. It's just stirring us up today that we Zakar remember all that Yahweh has done for us. We must and we have to look back on life and then see what Yahweh has done for us as a people, as a nation. To see what Yahweh has done for you. You know, there was a saying, it became cliche that I would hear even as a young person, you don't know like I know? Well, I know like you. Why? Because Yahweh has shed Oh, Yahshua HaMashiach has shed his dumb upon you just he has shed upon me, Israel. Show them every thing you may have experienced in life, but it is by the same dumb. It is by the same blood of Yahshua HaMashiach that we are delivered, Israel, even from those things. Hallelujah. I'm going to read in Wisdom chapter 6, verse 5. This is why Yahweh, he suffered even the calamities of the nation, his people, that we will be reminded. So he afflicts us. He allows certain pains and sufferings to come. That we will be reminded. That we would not forget him, Israel. Yes. It says here in Wisdom chapter 16, verse 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So even that, what you're going through, Israel, those pains and situations that Yahweh has brought you out of, he placed us in those things that we may remember Zakah, remember him, we not forget him. His strength of his power, his abundance, and his misfire. He said in verse 5, For when the terrible rage of the wild beasts came upon you and your people, and they were being destroyed by the bites of the writing of serpents. Serpents, they're just going, raising themselves up, biting. He says, Your wrath did not continue even unto the end. It said they were troubled for just a while as a warning that they would remember. Just to stir things up. That's all Yahweh does, Israel, at times, just to stir us up. And receive a token of deliverance. Why? To remind them of your commandments. Yahweh here allows us sometimes to be bitten by certain things that we will be reminded of the Torah of his commandments. Verse 7. For he who turned toward it was saved. It was delivered from that. The biting of the serpent even at that time. When they looked upon it, just as we should look upon Yahshua HaMashiach, but by what he saw, but by you, Almighty Yahweh, did salvation or your Yahshua come for all. Verse 8. And by this also you did convince your enemies that it is you who delivers from every evil. Do we believe that, Israel? It is Yahweh that delivers us from every evil. Every evil. There is nothing that will overwhelm us or should overwhelm us. Or bring us under. As long as the song we are sung, as Yahshua Hamashiach is on our side. Hallelujah. So as Yahweh, he delivers us from coal, from all, or from every evil. Verse 9. It says, for they were killed by the bites of the locusts and flies. And no healing was found for them because they deserved to be punished by such things. Verse 10. He said, but your sons... Your children were not conquered even by the teeth of the venomous serpents. For your hasit, your loving kindness came to their rescue, their help, and did heal them. Yes. Verse 11, he says, why? To remind them. To remind them. Remind me, Almighty Yahweh, of your hava, of your long suffering, your patience, where you have brought me from. The muck and the mire, you have pulled me out of, you have cleansed me. He said, to remind them of your oracles, that they were bitten. And then were quickly delivered. So even though Almighty Yahweh, he tries us, he allows us to be bitten, 
Still yet, his deliverance, this way, y'all, it is quick and it is swift to bring us out into Yahshua us, Israel. Yah. He said, lest they should fall into a deep forgetfulness and become unresponsive to your kindness. Yeah. Is that not what happens? When one is bit by a venomous serpent or even uh, anything that is venomous, a spider, they start to lose consciousness. That's what sin does when it bites Israel. Yah. It causes us to lose consciousness of the mitzvah and the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And it causes us to fall in deep sleep, to slumber, that we not remember what Yahweh has done. That we not remember to walk according to his statutes. We forget what he has commanded us, Yisrael Yah, that we may be presented before him blameless, and that we're able to lift our hands before him without sin, without any kind of condemnation. He says in verse 11 again, to remind them of your oracles which they were bitten. And when they were quickly delivered, lest they should fall into a deep forgetfulness and become unresponsive to your kindness. In verse 12, it goes on to say, for neither herb nor cure, for neither herb nor pestilence cured them, but it was your word, Almighty Yahweh. It is Yahweh's word that heals us. It's his word that keeps us, Israel. Not by any working or device of our own hands. There are all kinds of prescriptions and drugs and medicines out there. But it is only the word of Almighty Yahweh that heals us. It said, it's your word that heals them, Almighty Yahweh. And it heals all men. Verse 13, for you have power over life and over death. Does Shatan have this power? No, he does not. It is Yahweh that has power over life and death. He said, you do lead men down the gates of hate and back again. So does Yahweh, he leads us even into the gates of hell and back. Why? Because his Torah, his Mitzvah, Yisrael, it keeps us, it delivers us. Even in one's dying bed, and there are those that are listening have been to that point. But yet, just as we heard, it is Yahweh that has brought us forth as a memorial before him. But we must continue to walk according to his Mitzvah, his Torah, his statutes, Yisrael, and Zakah, remember, and we must be reminded of all the tough things which he has done for us and for Yisrael. That's all right. Turn me to Deuteronomy, Debrium chapter 8, verse 1. For even here Moshe, he exhorts or he commands Yisrael to remember or to be reminded of those things that Yahweh has done. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. So he, co he commands, he reminded Yisrael in verse 1 of all the commandments, the mitzvah. He says, all the mitzvah, the commandments, that I have instructed to command you this day, yeah. shall you observe to do, to do them. Observe just simply meaning in here, remember, to zakah, to obey. Obey is more than just one accomplishing an act, but it's one zakah remembering that, which he should do. That is also what obey implies. He said, I want you to observe and to do all that Almighty Yahweh has commanded, that you may live. Don't we want to live, Israel? We're not going to live unless we obey all that Yahweh has commanded us to do. Not picking things that we like, what we want to do. Then we discard the rest. I, I hover this one. I love that one, but that one I, I really don't have much of hover for. Yeah. Or I like that ketuv of Almighty Yahweh, but this one infringes upon my likes and my wants. That I have to lay those things aside to serve Almighty Yahweh. I don't want to do that. He said you're going to have to do it all. Yeah. That Why? That we may live? 
and multiply. And he says here to go and possess the roots of the land which Yahweh has promised to our Avat. Verse 2. And you shall zakah, you shall remember, or even remind yourself. We must remind ourselves, Israel, all of the ways which Yahweh your Abba has led us forth these 40 years. Remember, these are the commandments that Moshe had issued to the house of Israel. For these 40 years in the wilderness, why? To humble you. We must be humbled, Israel. Yes. To humble you and to prove you and to know what is in your heart. Yes. I want to know what's in my heart, Israel. Yes. And it is through his mishpah, his Torah, his commandments that reveals even those hidden things, Israel, yes. of your heart, yes. of my heart, yes. Yes. that we will zakah the word of Almighty Yahweh. He said that you will remember and know what is in your love, whether you will keep his mitzvah or not. Yes. So just as we heard here in, uh, in Wisdom concerning the serpents, he did the very same thing here, Yisrael. That even through those things that was experienced those 40 years in the wilderness, that Yahweh has tested to prove us, to humble us, to show us what's in our love, not what's in her love or his love, but in your love, to see whether we will obey and walk according to his testimonies and according to his statutes. No matter what the cost, yes. no matter what seems to rise up or the enemies they faced, mm -hmm. just to show you what is in your heart. To see if there was a desire and a will to walk according to his mitzvah and his statutes and his commandments. So remind us, Yisrael, Almighty Yahweh, show us your ways and your path that we may walk therein. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Verse 3. He said, and he did humble you. And he suffered, or he caused you to hunger. And fed you with manna. Is he not feeding us, Yisrael? Yes. Does he not feed us on kudvei mitz? And all his Shabbat, even daily by words or the word of an ot or an hope, or as we listen to the radio broadcast as it is streamed, or maybe just something that was brought to your remembrance, a word or a situation, and it caused you to zakah, remember the tub and the ahava of Almighty Yahweh and his patience towards us, Yisrael. He said, he caused you to hunger, but yet he fed you with manna, which we knew not. He said, neither did your fathers know that he might make you yada, or know that Adam, or man, he does not live by bread only, but by every, but by every, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Almighty Yahweh, does Adam or man live by? So it's more than just bread alone. It's more than just meat, Yisrael, but it's by every word. We must, Zakah, we must remember every word, Yisrael. That's the only way we're going to make it. That's the only way we're going to make it into the Melchut, into the kingdom. And that's the only way that we're going to be pleasing in the eyes and in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Turn me to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Yahweh, he, also, he always reminds us, Israel, of our shortcomings, where we came from, where we come from. He says here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. He says, wherefore, Remember, he said, I want you to remind yourself. I want you to correct, recollect that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, separated from the promises. We have separated ourselves by our own habits, 
things that we have learned? He said, I want you to remember that in time past, being Gentiles in the flesh, who are called a circumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh by hands. It was not yet being circumcised, Israel. Verse 12. That at that time you were without Yahshua HaMashiach, being aliens or alienated from the commonwealth of Ko Yisrael. Do you remember those times? Being alienated, not walking in the Mishpah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Going our own way, doing our own thing. Whatever we thought was pleasing in our own eyes. He said, I want you to Zakar, remember that time. And strangers from the covenant of promise, having no tikvah, and without Almighty Yahweh in the world. We were without Almighty Yahweh. Yet though he remembered, he looked upon us even at that state, Israel, our minds were not on Almighty Yah. Our minds were not on his Mishpah and his Torah. He says in verse 13, but now, but right now, in this present time, he said, but now, or he said, but know in Yahshua HaMashiach, you who sometimes were afar off, and now we are made nigh, by what? We are made nigh by the dawn. By the Dhamma, Yahshua HaMashiach. So he has brought us into his presence today because of the Dhamma. It's because of the blood, the Dhamma, Yahshua HaMashiach. So he wants to remind us, Israel, that even through all those things, we had no remembrance of Almighty Yahweh. Our minds were not even on him. Yet now, by the Dhamma, Yahshua HaMashiach, we are made close. We are made nigh unto him. Hallelujah. So let us be reminded, let us remember, Yisrael, what Yahweh has done for us. That we are able to enter into his presence without spot, without blemish, or any such thing. Because of the Dhamma, Yahshua HaMashiach. We must remember, we must zakah, we must remind ourselves, Yisrael. Turn with me to 2 Peter, Kepha, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Returning back to Peter, Kepha, chapter Second Peter, chapter three, verse one. Were not the writings from Kepha yeah. and many writings of Torah, letters that was written? It was for Israel to be reminded, not to forget. They were kept in the minds and the lives of those that heard. That it may be a memorial unto them, Israel, to continue in the path of Yahshua HaMashiach. All right. It says in 2 Kepha, chapter 3, verse 1. He says, Beloved, now write I to you, and both which I stir up your pure minds. We must be stirred up, Israel. Is not the Torah meant for us to be stirred up as we hear it preached, yeah. proclaimed? He said, I want to stir up your pure minds by this path, this way of remembrance. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the Kodesh prophets, the messengers, and of the commandments of us, the apostles, the Nabi, of our master Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 3. Knowing this first, why do you think he made that particular? He said, Yada. He said, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. He said, I want you to remember this. I don't want you to forget this. That in the last days, 
shall come scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation, from the beginning of all things. That's what they say. Is it not what they say? Nothing's happening. Everything is continuing as it is. But yet unto us, we have been given these writings that we should remember and zakah, those things that are to come, and those things that are taking place, Israel, that we may know, that we may yada what Yahweh is doing, that we may understand what Yahweh is doing, and that we may be reminded of his mishra and his Torah, those things which were spoken, Yisrael. Why? That we prepare ourselves, that we continue to make ourselves ready for those things that are to come and those things that are even at hand, Yisrael. Here in Yahuda, Jude, chapter 1, verse 5. God, yes. You know, There are things that happen to us physically. We get hurt, we stub our toe, and the pain sometimes just don't go right away. It may linger for a couple of days, even years. But every time that thing aches or hurts a little, it reminds you of that situation, of that time. And there have been many times you, you wished in a way, if I'd use that term, if you could change it at that time, you would have. But it is set there to remind you not to do that again, not to go that way again. Not to do it that way. You tried it that way and it didn't work, and you see what happened. Don't go that path again. And if you go upon that path, I want you to be more watchful, careful. So he reminds us here, Jude reminds us in chapter 1, verse 5, concerning these very same things, the dangers. Or what happened to a nation of people when we do not zakah, we do not remember yeah. the judgments of Almighty Yahweh. He said, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though you once knew this, how that Yahweh having saved Yahshua, the people out of the land of Mizraim, afterward he destroyed them that believe not. He destroyed them that believe not. If you go that same way, you see what had happened the first time. You say, well, let me try that again. It may not happen again. You have been warned not to do certain things, Israel. We are continually warned through Torah not to go that way again. But we find ourselves somehow, shoo, or we turn like a black, backslidden heifer going back to those same things. Verse 6. He said he destroyed them, did he not, in verse 5, that believe not. Verse 6. And the mannequin which kept not their first estate, but left their own inhabitation, he has also reserved an everlasting change out of the darkness to judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner. So has that happened before? Sodom and Gomorrah, it happened, and it should happen again. So should we be reminded of those things that have taken place in Torah, that we can use those, if I may use, to our advantage? That we're not displeased, Almighty Yahweh, to this point, that he destroys us without a trace, by the aft or by the fire of his indignation, his judgment. He said, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over unto fornications and going after strange flesh, are set forth as what? An example. And as an example that we should remember, that we zakah, the judgments of Almighty Yahweh. It says, suffering even the vengeance of eternal fire, Hallelujah. suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So that is where we are staked, where we will be, where we shall be if we continue to transgress the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. 
and we throw his Torah behind our backs, Israel, y'all, and we don't zakar, remember, it would be just as Sodom and Gomorrah, that by his ath, his anger, everlasting fire, the Torah says, we will be destroyed. And there will be no remembrance, Israel, y'all, over us. So let's continue to walk in remembrance of his judgments, Israel, y'all. Saul speaks in Timothia, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. We must remember each other, Israel, y'all, one another with this very same Ahava as it's spoken here in Timothia. By his very son, the Ahava he showed towards him. It says here, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. It says, Saul, an apostle of Yahshua HaMashiach, by the will of Almighty Yahweh, according to the promise of life, which is in Yahshua HaMashiach. That's our only promise of life, Israel. It's in Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 2. He says, To Timothia, my dearly beloved son, we should look at each and every one of us in this same matter, Israel. We should be beloved and dearly beloved one of another. So ah to ah, a hope to a hope. Yes, this is how it should be in the house of Israel. Yes. Must be a fervent love. He said, The free are merited Ahava and favor, his hasid and shalom from Yahweh our Abba and Yahshua Hamashiach our yes. master. He says, I think, I thank Yahweh whom I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience. He said, with a pure mind. He said, I serve Almighty Yahweh with a pure laugh. And that, he says, without ceasing, have I remembrance of you. Do we have that ahava one to another? That we remember my Atya Wasana, my Aho Sakia. Shimri. That as we pull out, we pray, we bow our knees, as we work. Even our goals and what we seek to accomplish daily, that the condition is in our mind. That's the kind of ahava he had. That's the kind of ahava that Yahshua has for us, Israel. That he is forever in remembrance of us. Do we think about one another? When you are have a war or you are have a something, it's continually in your thought process, in your mind. You don't forget it. Yeah. There may be other thoughts throughout the day, but that one you don't forget. He said, without season, he said, I have remembrance of you in my prayers, both night and day. He said, greatly desiring to see you. Do we desire to see one another? Or do we grow weary with the presence of an art or a hope? He said, desiring to see you. Be mindful of your tears that I may be fulfilled or filled with joy. Verse 5. He said, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, imuna, that is in you, which dwell first in your grandmother, Mother Lois. So he remembered even the line. And your mother, Eunice. And I am persuaded that that is in you also. What is in us, Yisrael? It's those same attributes that proceed out of the line, the bloodline, Yahshua HaMashiach. Is those same, same things revealed in us, Israel? Is he not reminded of us daily? Should not we remind one another to continue to walk in those things that has been laid as a foundation? His dharma is a foundation for us all, Israel. That we walk according to his mishra, we walk according to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Many times you can look at one and you can see the resemblance of the grandparent and the grandchild. Yes, you can. And for many generations, you can see the physical resemblance of that. Even sometimes to very uh, habits 
They're somewhat intermingled in those, in the bloodline, in the cells, in the remembrance of those things that Yah had placed in the body of Adam, in the body of man. And you will see those things. I, I've seen pictures of, of uh, long cousins and of, uh, long uncles, yeah. and you can see the resemblance in the physical now in those same pictures. Why? Because of the, the line, because of, of uh, the bloodline, yeah. those things. So we should be able to look upon one another and see Yahshua HaMashiach, the dom that has been shed upon us all, Yisrael, and that we are a that we in remembrance one of another. Through the working day, that we forget not one another. If we truly have one another, Yisrael, let us be in remembrance. To Helium. To Helium chapter 30, verse 4. I want to read verse 4. Uh, then I want to move on to Tehillim 97, verse 12. Just a couple of verses here, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. And then I want to move from, even though we somewhat touch here and there concerning forget, I want to move on to the forgetful or the forgetfulness shortly here. Hallelujah. And uh, I will continue this message concerning the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. But we must be reminded, Israel. And we must not forget all that Yah has done, that we may truly understand this abundance and what he has done through Yahshua HaMashiach and the examples that have been written here in Torah. Hallelujah. It says in Tehillim chapter 30, verse 4, as he zakah Dawid, he remembered many accounts of many things. He written this to Helium, unto Almighty Yahweh, sung this to Helium. He says, to sing unto Yahweh, Oh, you Kedushim of his. Yes. Are we not his? Yes. He, has not laid, he has laid possession of us, Israel. We belong unto Almighty Yahweh. We're no longer our own. Why? Because we have been paid yes. with the full price of the Dhamma, Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, oh, you Kedushim of his. He says, to give Todah at the remembrance of his pure set apartness. That he is like no other. His ways, they are set apart. His ahava, it is set apart. His judgment is like no other. Because he set all things apart, Yisrael. Even us, we have been set apart to his tough pleasure, to his use to use. However, he seemed ple pleased, Yisrael. He seemed fit for us. It also says in Tehillim 97, verse 12. If you just listen. To Helium 97, verse 12. Again, he says, to rejoice in Almighty Yahweh. You're righteous. We should rejoice, Israel. Why? Because we are righteous. He has deemed us righteous in this appointed time, in this hour. By the dawn and through Yahshua HaMashiach, the Torah, his mitzvah. We must zakah. We must remember. He said, oh, you're righteous. And give todah at the remembrance of his set apartness. That Yahweh, he has divided us. He has set us apart, Yisrael. He has set us apart from worldly things. For the worldly way of thinking. He has set us apart that we will be a Kodesh people unto him. That we walk according to his statutes, according to his mitzvah. And that we will zakah, remember him in all things. The beloved or the beloved of one wants to be remembered. He wants us to remember uh, him, Yisrael, in everything, in every way, in every facet. He has done so much for us as a house and as a people, Yisrael, because there's a hava, it is that deep, that the depths of it cannot be found. So he has set us apart, Yisrael, for his own service. Let us zakah, let us remember, Yisrael, the pureness of his set apartness. Even this day has been set apart for every other day. Hallelujah. Moving on as I bring this to a close today, Israel, I want to speak a little while just concerning forget. Shachach. It's one, when you forget, you just simply cease to care. You allow the moment or the thing to slip your mind. You're, you're in some, uh, somewhat of a sleep that you allow that to get by you. 
your vision, your focus. But Yahweh, he warns us not to forget certain things. But we still are a forgetful people. So let me deal with this just for a little while, just right, y'all. In Debrium, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9, he warns us not to forget. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9. He says to only take heed to yourself. So I want you to pay attention. I want you to observe yourself. And keep your nephews diligently. It's a continual thing. It is perpetual. It's over and over. It's diligence. You're not, you're not missing the mark. Everything is line upon line and precept upon precept. You're, you have a list and you're accomplishing each one of those goals. He says, to keep your nephews diligently, least you forget. Least you forget. And I know there's things that I, surely I do forget. But he warns us, Israel, concerning his Mishfa, his Torah. Least you forget these things which your eyes have seen, unless they depart from your left. Not some of the days, but he said all the days of your life. We must observe, we must be, di- we must be diligent in the feast days, his Shabbats, the gatherings, the assembling of us together, Israel, y'all, we must be mindful. We must, those things must be continual, Israel, y'all, that we not forget. Because if we forget, if we stop doing those things, they'll be forgotten forever. And look what else he says here. But I want you to teach them to your sons. We must teach them to our sons. They must be taught to our children. Why? And to your son's sons. That this will be a perpetual, continual thing, Israel. I want to skip down to verse 23 of the same chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 4. He is talking to you. He is talking to us, Israel. Again, he says here in verse 23, Deuteronomy 4, Take heed to yourselves. Least you forget the covenant of Yahweh, your Abba, yes. which he has made with you, and making you graven images, or any likeness of anything which Yahweh, your Abba, has forbidden. Mm-hmm. So did they not, as we have read earlier, as Israel venture out of Israel, you make a golden calf? Yes. Were there not other thoughts and ideas that were in- implemented in the minds and in the thought process of Israel? So it is today, Israel. He said we should not forget those things. Let us remember those examples, Israel. It also says in Deuteronomy, if you will move on to verse 8, chapter 8, verse 11. Chapter 8, verse 11. Then we're going to skip to verse 14. This is an exhortation for us not to forget. We talked about remembrance. So I just want to deal with forgetting. It says in Deuteronomy 8, verse 11, he says, Beware, or be warned, I have warned you, that you forget not Yahweh, your Abba. Have we forgotten Yah? Do we forget Yah? In the midst of our anger and our frustrations, our lust and our thoughts process, he warns us, beware, that you forget not Yahweh, your Abba, and not keeping his commandments. Yes. So we cannot say that we remember or we zakah or his name is a memorial in our minds and in our life if we forget his commandments. If they're not, first and foremost, the most important thing in our lives, Israel, we cannot say that honestly. He said, do not forget Yahweh your Abba and not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command you this day. Was he talking about just then, on that day? He's talking about now. We've heard continually that the Torah, the Mishra is living. It doesn't die. 
So this very same commandment, this kutub that has been written unto us, it abides today, even right now, and it will tomorrow, and it will exceed us, Yisrael. So he says, this day, he said, I want you to zakar, I want you to remember his commandments. Moving quickly down to verse 14. Talking about forget. We must not forget, Yisrael, his commandments, his judgments. This should tell us briefly why we forget. Even the lifting of our own legs, we put things before Almighty Yahweh. We put our thoughts before Almighty Yahweh. We put what I want to do and what I want before Almighty Yahweh. He says, when your love be lifted up, should not we lift up Yahweh? Yeah. Lift up Yahshua HaMashiach. His Mishpah, his Torah, it should be forever lifted up. But we lift ourselves up. We lift the thoughts of our minds up. We make these graven images before Almighty Yahweh. We put things before Yahweh. We must be honest with ourselves, Yisrael Yah. If we want to be held and allow the Torah to work and have its perfect work, we must be honest in the house of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because he sees and there's nothing hid from him, Yisrael Yah. But we must confess our faults that we may deliver, be delivered, Yisrael Yah. He said, then your heart be lifted up and you forget Yahweh, your Abba, which brought you forth out of the land of Mizraim from the house of bondage. Is that not what happened in the wilderness? The lambs became lifted up. And they forgot the mitzvah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. They forgot the acts of Almighty Yahweh, what he has done. Uh, again, to Helium. Chapter 119, verse 16. You know, if we find ourselves delighting in the mitzvah, Walking in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, we will not forget what he commands us. Why? Because there's a great delight. There's, there's a, how should I say this? It, it, it's the life that's within you. Whatever is in a man, does it not proceed out of his mouth? Is it not revealed, whether it's by his actions or by his words or his deeds? So we have or delight ourselves in Almighty Yahweh, that we will walk according to his commandments and statutes and not forget him. So quickly, 119 to Helium, 119 verse 16, he says, I will delight myself in your statutes. Those things that have been established, they have been laid. They secure me, your statutes. And he says, I will not forget your Torah. I will not forget your word. He said, I will not, because I delight myself in your statutes. If we delight ourselves in his statutes, we will not forget his mitzvah. We will not forget his word. Also, if we move down to 119 to verse 153. Even in Dawid, in all of his battles, no matter what he went through, Yisrael, he always written to Heliums and things. He always kept his tikva. And the reason why those things were written, he would continue to have those to Heliums in his lab, and he would sing that he will not forget. He will not forget Almighty Yahweh what he has done. So he written to Heliums. He sung to Heliums that he will not forget. He continually reminded himself of the tub of Almighty Yahweh. Even in battle, in affliction, when it seemed that his enemies were, had overcome him, yet he sung unto Almighty Yahweh that he will remember. So he says here in 153 to Helium 119, to consider my afflictions, Almighty Yahweh, and deliver me. Why? He says, even in them, for I do not forget your Torah. So we cannot forget his Torah. No matter what we face, no matter what we are enduring, we cannot forget his Torah. Again, if we will move down to 176, to Helium, 119, 176. He said, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Yeah. Well, his, was he not confessing before Almighty Yahweh? Sure yeah. More for himself. Because Yahweh knew that. Yeah. But he had to realize that for himself. Yeah. That I continually have gone astray like a sheep. Yeah. He said, seek your servant. Is that not what a tough shepherd does when a sheep yeah. goes astray? He goes after that. We were to lose a sheep. 
A tough shepherd knows when there's one lost out of the flock, or one of our cattle. Whomever is observant of that, that watches for them, he will know quickly there's one missing. So what does one do? He search. He goes after that one. Don't you worry, Yahweh, for Yahshua HaMashiach, that he has gone after us. He's reached out unto us, Yisrael. He has not let us be, he has not allowed us to be consumed by sin that it destroy us. He said, I am like a lost sheep, Almighty Yahweh. He said, seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Uh, a sheep, even though a sheep may go astray, he do not forget the commandments. Why? Because when he hears the voice of the tough shepherd, he knows him. The sheep, even the goats, they know the one that feeds him. They know the sounds of the one's voice. I, I've seen it. I've gone out there hollering at the goats. They, they respond, all right, we acknowledge you, but we're looking for a certain one. The sheep, the same thing. My Ishaw, for years, we had one that was named Friendly, and it seemed like that one would lead all the other sheep down when she calls them. I would call, I would not get the same response. Yes, yes. The response is kind of laggard. They take their time, but because she was there, she was feeding them, and they recognized her verse because she would call them. Her, their, her voice, because she would call them, they would come immediately when she calls. So he said, Yah, he said, I will not forget. He said, I will not forget, or I have not forgotten your commandments, Almighty Yahweh. So did he understand the voice of Almighty Yahweh? Yeah. Sure he did. Sure he did. So Yahweh he has gone after us, Yisrael Yahweh, Yahshua Hamashiach, that we may hear his voice, and that we return back unto the sheepfold, unto the herd. Unto Yisrael. Uh, again, here Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3, I'm going to read 1 through 2. Quickly, Yisrael. Concern and forget. You know, even Hukmah or wisdom teaches us not to forget. You've already gone through that thing. You, you receive the wisdom of that, the knowledge of that, that you do not do it again. At least you, we, should, we should do that. Hallelujah. He says in Proverbs 3, verse 1, he said, My son, forget not my Torah, but let your heart, your love, keep my misvu. Yeah. The mitzvah, the misvu. Why do you think it was, if I use this illustrated or written in this manner? Because the father had more experience than the son. So he gives the son the commandments because he's already experienced that thing. Walk according to my commandments, and it will be well with you. Sure. You will not have to find or go through the agonies and the pains that I've gone through. It will be easier. Just obey my commandments. So he said, forget not my commandments, my Torah, but you let your love, your mind, meditate, keep my misruth. Verse 2. For length of days and long life oh, yeah. and shalom. Don't we want that? Length of days. is not Hezekiah did not pray for that. Length of days. He said, for length of days, if we not forget his Torah and Shalom, yes. shall they add unto you. So that's what not being forgetful, but being reminded and reminding ourselves, reminding yourself of the Torah of Yah. It gives us length of days. It gives us a long life in Israel, in Yahshua HaMashiach that those things are added unto us. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Somewhat echoing the same things in the previous chapter, Proverbs 4, 3. He says here, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Have not Yahweh spoken unto us from the beginning of all things that to hear that he spoke, did he not, Yisrael? Yeah. He do not want us to forget his words or the words of his mouth. Yeah. From then even unto now, verse 6. He says, to forsake her not, and she shall preserve you, love her, and she shall Keep you. Yeah. 
And it's by his mitzvah, it's by his Torah, it's by experience, hukmar, that we are kept, Yisrael. But let us not forget his statutes. Moving back to Tehillim, 106, verse 13 through 16. 106, 13 through 16. Just dealing with forgetting briefly here, Yisrael. Because of, in all the abundance and the things that Yahweh has done and that he has given us, Yisrael, we must zakah, we must remember and not forget his Torah, that we may enjoy those things. That it may fulfill us, Yisrael, in this life, Yahshua HaMashiach. To Helion 106.13. He says, they soon forgot his works. This is concerning the works of Almighty Yahweh because we do forget. And many times we've forgotten, Yisrael, the things and the way of the Torah of Yah. They soon forgot his works and waited not for his counsel. Verse 14, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted Almighty Yahweh in the desert. And he gave them their request. He still yet gave them what they wanted, but they requested. But in exchange, he sent them leanness in their nephesh. I don't want to experience that leanness, Israel. When one is lean, one lacks. If we recall the, in Torah concerning the rich young ruler, he said, I have kept your misfire, your Torah, all the days of my young life. I kept those things. But even in that, did he not lack? Then Yahshua said, no, you lack. Go sell those things which you have that you may procure this thing, this one thing that you lack. But what did he do? He went away softer, did he not? Did he not ask what should, could he do that he may inherit the Melchut, the kingdom? We must do these things, Israel. We must not forget his statutes and his commandments. We should zakah. We should remember all the great and mighty things he has done for us, Israel, and the things that he has spoken. He says that he sent them leanness in their nephew. So he gave them what they wanted. They wanted meat. So he gave them meat. They wanted that lust, that desire. He gave it to them. But yet they had nothing in their living. It did not increase their ahava towards Almighty Yahweh. It did not make them want to walk in a greater fashion or closer to Almighty Yahweh. It, it did not do that, Yisrael. Yah, he wants us, or well, we should desire a closer walk with Yahshua HaMashiach, to draw closer unto his Ruach, HaKodesh's presence. Verse 16. And they envy. Moshe also in the camp. And Aharon, the condition of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Do we find ourselves envying? There's somewhat of this, this hateful displeasure for those that walk in the statues that continually remind us of the things that we must do. Yes. That's what the Malak is for, is to remind us. That's what the messenger is for, to bring the Mishra and the Torah unto us as a nation, as a people. To remind us to walk according to the path. That what the Kohen does, he's a reminder. Yes. That we continue to walk according to the Mishra, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Just a few more verses, Israel, as I bring this to a close today on this beautiful Shabbat concerning forgetting and also remembrance, remembrance of Yahweh's Torah, his Mishra, not to forget them. Why? Because this is our life. This is what we live by. This is what keeps us. Hallelujah. It says here another reason why we forget Yisrael. To Helium 78, verse 10. Verse 10 to verse 12. It says, They kept not the covenant of Almighty Yahweh and refused just flat out said no to Yahweh. Is that not what a fool does? Yeah. Says no unto Yah. Yeah. And refused to walk in his Torah. Verse 11. To Helium 7, 8, verse 11. And forgot 
his works. They forgot his works. They forgot the things which were wrought in the hands and by the Ahava of Almighty Yahweh. And forgot his works and his wonders that he has shown them. Verse 12. It says, marvelous things, God all things did he in the sight of the Avots, their fathers, in the land of Egypt, and in the field of Zion, Zohar. Does not Yahweh still yet show us marvelous things? Are we not alive at this moment, this time? Has he not awakened us this morning? He has showed us a mighty thing, a marvelous thing, but yet we forget that it is Yahweh that has awakened us this morning. We hear Zakain. Been to me so many times say there's those that did not wake up this morning. There's those that did not see the light of day. But yet Yahweh has a, allowed us to see another Yom, another Shabbat, another gathering. Hallelujah. So the uh, here in Hosea, just this one verse, and then I'm going to complete this in Kepha, second Kepha. This is why we're being destroyed. It's because we forget that we have forgotten. Hosea says here in chapter 4, verse 6, that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge. It's not because the knowledge is not there. Yahweh has not placed those in the midst of Yisrael to fill us with knowledge and hook our understanding, yeah. wisdom, but because we have rejected that which Yahweh has given. He said that you have rejected knowledge. He said, I will also, my, reject you. Yahweh will reject us, Israel, y'all. We continually reject him. He said, he, I, he said, I will reject you. Yeah. That you shall be no co to me. Yeah. See, you have forgotten the Torah of Yahweh, your Abba, my mind. No more use. You have no need of us, Yisrael, Yah, to carry his Torah, his misfah, whether it's by our words or it's by our life. Why? Because we have forgotten not only that, but he said we have rejected. We have refused him, he says. Since you have forgotten the Torah of Yahweh, your Abba, he said, I will also forget, not you, but your children. He said, your children. I don't want Yahweh to forget our children here. Our children, believe me, the little ones that listen to the broadcast just as well as the adults, and they hear. We don't want you all to be forgotten, little children. Why? Because they are the ones that will take this on and on and on, Yisrael. So let us walk. Let us not forget Yahweh's Torah. Let us teach it unto our babe, our children. That Yahweh, he would not forget us, and that he would not forget our children, Yisrael. I'm going to end this here in 2 Kepha, 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 9. In this time, in this generation, Yisrael, we have forgotten Almighty Yahweh. And we have not grown spiritually strong, that we can withstand the enemies our enemy than the, the fiery darts of Shatan because we continue to forget his misfire. So uh, Kephar says here in 2 Kephar chapter 1, it's a Simon Kephar servant and an apostle of Yahshua HaMashiach to them that have obtained light precious imuna with us through the righteousness of Yahweh and our Yasha, Yahshua HaMashiach. He says, Shalom, the free emerited, Ahava and favor, and Shalom be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of Yahweh and of Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, according as he has revelation or revealed his power, he has given to us all things. Does it say all things? It says all things are your say. So he has not left out anything. He has given us all that is required, all that is needed, even in his abundance, even more so, Yisrael. He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and being has, hasik, 
are set apart. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to virtue and to power. Verse 4. Whereby are given to us exceeding and great precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the revealed nature of his ahava, his huffy, his hussy, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There's much corruption in this world, and it's all through lust, Israel. But by these promises, by even the remembrance of the Torah, the mystery of Almighty Yahweh, he keeps us, Israel. Verse 5. And beside this, give it all diligence. There's that word again, diligence. Do we not talk about diligence? Keeping ourselves, our nephesh, diligently. He said, being, and beside this, give it all diligence. Add to your imuna virtue, and to this virtue, knowledge. Verse 6. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, he says here, Shabbat, guarding pity. So we must have those things, Israel, that we're able to rest and show forth even the pity of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 8. For if these things be in you and abound, they remain, they multiply in abundance. They make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our master, Yahshua HaMashiach. In my closing verse 9, we desire to be abundant, to produce with much ahava towards our neighbor, towards our, our, towards our, our hope, our ahava to Almighty Yahweh. He promised that we would not be uh, unfruitful, Yisrael, in this. Verse 19. But he that lacks these things is blind. He cannot see the light. He cannot see the truth, Yahshua, in Yahshua HaMashiach. He not, has not allowed... Yahshua HaMashiach to be revealed unto him. But he lacks these things. He is blind and cannot see afar off. And he has forgotten. This one with this mindset, he has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So should we forget the purging? How through Yahshua HaMashiach has done, we have been washed from all of our sins, Yisrael. Yeah. We must be in remembrance. We must be reminded of our sin. We must be reminded to stay on this path of righteousness. We must be reminded to continue in the mitzvah and the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. We must be reminded to ahava one another. We must be reminded to not walk according to our own lust and our own way and our yeah. own sins. And we must be reminded not to forget the mitzvah, the Torah, the words. Of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want and I pray that this message has been an inspiration to your love, to stir us up today, Yisrael, that we even remember this high Shabbat, this Shabbat that Yahweh has given us, that we set it aside from every other day, Yisrael, that we rest in Yahshua, we rest in his promises, and that we rest in his Torah. Hallelujah. We do barat Yahweh for all things that he has not forgotten us, Yisrael, yeah. and that we are continually in his mind, Adam, man, Yisrael. Yeah. We are his. We are his possession. Yeah. And he has not, he doesn't forget us. He knows what we have need of daily, even before we even ask for it, Yisrael. Yeah. So is it not his Ahava great? Yeah. Is it not abundant, Yisrael, towards us? Yeah. Hallelujah. So let us continue to barak him, to give him praise, yeah. to give him todah, and everything. When it seems like times they're tough, and when it seems like the times are hard. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yet let us give him todah, why? Because he is in control of everything. Let us stand to our feet. This has been a wonderful yom and wonderful time. We have gathered together, Israel, to hear the Torah, the Mishnah of Almighty Yahweh. So let us continue in remembrance.
of the Ahava of Almighty Yahweh, and also that we Ahava, we Zakar, we remember one another, Yisrael, in prayer and our activities and all that we do. Hallelujah. Almighty Yahweh, we do barak you for this, another day, another time. Another opportunity that you have given us, Abba Yahweh, Hallelujah. that we should enjoy and gather together, Abba Yahweh, in your bed, whether it be in this physical, this house, Abba Yahweh, or those that are listening by via live stream. We do pray for a cold Yisrael that is scattered throughout the Olam, Abba Yahweh, that you will continue to provide those things that are needed, Abba Yahweh, for the live of Yisrael and also for the bodies, Abba Yahweh, that your word will continue to go forth to heal to make whole and to straighten, Abba Yahweh, the paths that you have set before us, Abba Yahweh, that we may bring an offering that is pleasing unto you, Almighty Yah. We do pray for those that are sick in their bodies, Abba Yahweh, that you will make them whole this day, that you will heal them, Abba Yahweh, that you will renew and restore Imuna, Abba Yahweh, and Ahava towards your mitzvah. And all things we do, Barak, you, we give you Toda, those that have traveled, whether it be a far off or near Abba Yahweh, that you would take them home safely, and that your, Mel- your Melakim and your Torah will be encamped around them yeah. at all times. And all things we do, Barak, we give you praise in the precious Hallelujah. and wonderful name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat Shalom, Ko Yisrael. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah.